That's right. Here he is, Will Dawkins, GM of the Washington Wizards. How did we sucker you into coming in? <laughs> ah, it was easy. Just a quick text message. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. I, I, <laughs> I love that good. for us. Um, okay, let's just get right to the draft. Second pick. Second yes. pick in the draft. I know it's a weird one. Um, where are you on exploring options? Are you going to pick somebody? Is he going to be French? Is he going to be French? I think there's some French options some at the French top. French options out there. Uh, we're excited to have the second pick. Yeah. It's something for us that we know we're going to get a talented player, no matter where you're at, that high up in the draft. I know people have said some things about this draft, but we're actually excited about it. They have uh, said It's like you don't you don't agree with the I don't really buy into draft that. assessment? Yeah, I think there's less instant gratification in this draft. Like you won't see players in year <laughs> one, year two make that huge jump and impact on the league. When you look back two, three, four, five years down the line, I think you'll see some pretty high-level players that are impacting the playoffs like we're seeing now. For real. I didn't look at it like that. Immediate gratification. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I we are kind of The wow factor might not be there right away, but if you can – have the plan to take the progress, you'll find some good players. Wimby ruined it. I mean, it that <laughs> yeah, was it's like last lot. year you have the number one pick, you have a parade. This year yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> who will be yeah. taking? It's yeah. not the go-to guy. When you, you, guys go also, you guys also have the 26th pick, you said the 51st pick. Yes. There's a kid out there named Bronny James. Yep. Oh dear. Everyone's talking about, does, does, does daddy follow him? Is, is that something they're exploring? Because his combine, he actually looked kind of nice. Yeah, I would say if his name was Johnny James, yeah. <laughs> like the media and no fans buddy. wouldn't care as much, right. but he'd still be on our radar. Like he's a guy that, did his work in high school, was a high school All-American, obviously showed a, a, a massive resilience to come back from everything he went through. So you didn't expect him to start the year off the way he did. Um, so he finished the year strong, he's finishing the combine strong. So as evaluators, we have to look at him, but at the end of the day, He's just like everyone else in this draft process. See, we've been getting into that. Like He's saying he's a prospect without his dad being LeBron James. And I'm like, I, I, I don't think so. I think that part of that for the Washington Wizards, for any other team, if you draft it, if we could draft him and possibly get LeBron the way he's still playing, it's yeah. obviously a, a plus. Yeah, I don't think we look at it that way. I don't. think we're focused on the player and making sure we add the right pieces to the team. Ha. And he's a power <laughs> five he's guy who went to the McDonald's all American game. He's a talented player. So we have to look at him just like we're looking at everybody else. Right. Well, you worked for Sam Presti in Oklahoma City for a yes. really, really long time. What did you learn about team building, about building a culture in Oklahoma City and under Sam? Under Sam, everything. <laughs> um, he's, he's the best at what he does. He was, took me when I was 21 years old in Seattle, kind of raised me through from an intern all the way to um, spending close time with him at the top. So he's someone that is an everyday guy. Um, he really believes in people, and he makes sure that he puts the pieces in order that makes sense. Not for everybody, but for them, and what works in Oklahoma City, and has a lot of patience and treats people well. So I'm very fortunate that uh, he raised me the way that he did. So when you think about it, obviously there have been multiple plans to rebuild and, and turn that Oklahoma City team yeah. into a championship contender multiple times. We How do got you? This guy to finally come. <laughs> we, we thought we were going to get it done one of those. Years, I would but love it didn't to. Work out. I would have loved to. You know, he's big on cities. Okay. I went to Memphis, though. <laughs> so I can, he needs money. There it is. There it is. I would do just fine in Oklahoma City. Um, obviously, for you guys, how far do you feel you guys are away from contending? Is there a year-to-year -year plan, three-year plan? Like, how do you view you guys? Yeah, I, I, I know this. We won't skip steps. We're not going to put a timeline on it. When Michael Winger and I first came in almost a year ago now and met with Mr. Leonsis, we talked about kind of what it would take. And he granted us the ability to do what we thought was best. Um, when you look at kind of how long rebuilds take, we're kind of in year one this year. But we have a lot of players that we have confidence in that could be there moving forward, and we have a lot of picks and a lot of assets and things we can do. So we're in a good city in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we're, we're building it up the right way, and we won't rush that. Is there a, a department for slogans? For example, trust the process. Uh, who's in charge of coming up with that? Uh, we're hiring for that. Okay. If you know anyone, let me I know. I feel like that's a, a good young position yeah. for somebody to have in, in the building. Do you have any names? Shoot it I to mean, me. I'm not a creative. <laughs> Shams is not creative. I don't know. And no one up here is creative. Um, why well, why do you that? know me? Because I know you're not creative. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say Shams is creative? Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. Silence. Uh, <laughs> Silence. Tough. So proud of We had uh, we had Bilal Koulibaly on. Yes. Uh, I think last week actually, and mm -hmm. it, it, the rumor is he's the only untouchable. Is that true? First off, you guys tried to trick my guy on the show. Yeah, we did. Show. That's my bad. I'm <laughs> nice you know what? He was good. He, he was it. good. He caught it, so he, I give him a lot of credit it. for that. <laughs> I would say we have a, a talented group, guys that have gotten better this year. We're going to continue to be opportunistic and look at everything that comes our way. If you saw us in the draft last year, I think we traded two or three times, I think it was. So um, we, we like our crew. We're going to continue adding to that crew. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. So, well, you started off as an intern, I believe, in Oklahoma City. You yep. work pretty much every job you can work in the front office yep. in Oklahoma City. And now you're the general manager of an NBA team. It's awesome. Running day-to-day. -day. For you, obviously, you had a 
past too. I believe you played basketball, Emerson. A little bit, not very good. What what what, have, what do you feel like all these experiences taught you and 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 the lessons you learned to bring you to this point? Right. Yeah, now? I would say I was very fortunate to uh, go brick by brick, like within the organization. Started off as an intern, then video, um, doing some behind the bench coaching stuff, and then kind of switched to the front office and got to build my way up through evaluation, then kind of upper management. So, I got to understand the job at every level. And I think that's what really benefited me. I got to fold the laundry. I got to rebound. I got to go on the road. I got to drive cars, take notes. So no you job know. too small. That's exactly. awesome. So you know what goes into it, and you know that it's all about people and working hard. So if I'd, I didn't have that opportunity, if I didn't go to Emerson College and Hank Smith recommended me to Sam Presti, who was our college coach that we both shared, I probably wouldn't be in the NBA. So I kept that kind of day one focus from the very beginning. The front office, Eric Spolstra. <laughs> there you go. Will, one of the first things you did um, as GM was, was trade Porzingis to the Celtics. Yeah. What was the thought process behind that decision in trading it? Yeah, so when we walked in, we I was probably had the press conference on June 10th. As you know, the draft is right there. And three of our better players at the time, we had to make decisions on. Um, Kyle Kuzma. Porzingis were potential free agents, had options, and then with Bradley Beal. So what we wanted to do was make sure that we sat down with the players, sat down with their reps, and made sure we did what was best for them. We tried to find a deal that worked for the other team and us. And with KP, uh, as you guys were talking about earlier on the segment, like he's a big piece for them. Um, so we wanted to make sure we allowed him to go in a position that was best for him, that allowed us to go on the track we want to go to. See, when you well. make a trade like that, though, for KP, are you thinking in the back of your head, damn, I'm making a, a really good team even better that I'm going to have to go through, or you don't even look at it like you that? You can't look at that. you got to look around at the options and find out what's best for you in return. And we like to do good deals that feel good for both teams, and I think both teams feel good about that one. Yeah, you mentioned Bradley Beal because then you guys sent him to the Suns. But he had the whole no trade thing, which yes. was huge and probably very difficult for, for guys in your position. So... How how does that even start? What does it look like the process wise? And and are there other teams that he was like absolutely not? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was um, a complication for us. Okay. I would say once we got there, Brad's great as you guys know. Um, got an opportunity to sit down and find out what was important to him. And when we sat down with Brad and had a conversation with his representation, it was pretty clear the direction we wanted to go and the direction he wanted to go. And Brad loves DC. Was great for everybody there. But at this time in his career, he probably didn't make sense for where we wanted to take the team. So we looked around, found a spot, and I think he found a good spot in Phoenix, and it's going to be good moving forward. Are you shocked they didn't go further? I mean, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> uh, we are. <laughs> we are shocked by that. What happened? Again, instant gratification doesn't work year it, one all the time. It really doesn't. You, you stick with it. I think you saw it in the teams that are playing in the playoffs right now <laughs> in the Western Conference. Like, things take time. By the way, how about this? 30 seconds only get this job, and do you have three big-ass decisions to make? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a draft. Your first two weeks, I'll talk, yeah, and you got the and draft right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Then you get CP3 in the Beal trade. Yes. And you bring on, you know, you trade for Jordan Poole, which yep. raised a lot of eyebrows with all the, everything that happened with him in Golden State. Yeah. How did that whole process go down? What were you looking for for that move? Yeah, I think they all look as different trades, but it was kind of all one, packed in one. You got to do the best based on the timing and everything. Um, Love CP, had him in Oklahoma City. He really helped start that second wave and really gave SGA that platform to kind of learn how to play point guard and with the ball. So knew what he would do um, in the environment that we had, but I thought at that time it made more sense to try to invest in a young player in Jordan Poole, who I'm actually excited about. Um, I know he didn't start the year that he want, the way he wanted to, but he's still young, still developing, and the way he finished the year is what we're expecting moving forward. So for where our team is, Jordan was a leader for us, and he's going to continue to be that and a player that's with us moving forward. Such a, such a weird end for him in Golden State. Um, yeah. Kyle Kuzma thought maybe he was going to go to Dallas, didn't move him at the trade deadline. He mm -hmm. said he wanted to stay in Washington, D.C. So does that mean long-term you're looking at him as, as a yeah. pillar? I would say Kyle's played his best basketball in D.C. And the reason why we were able to re-sign him is when we sat down, he said, I want to be here. I want to be here for what we're doing and moving forward. So obviously trade conversations, there's a lot of iterations yeah. that go back and forth. I think with that one, we ended up, doing a first round pick in Daniel Gafford. And you feel good when you can call Gaff on the phone and be like, hey, you're going close to home. It's a good team, it's a good fit. And that's the deal that made the most sense for us. And I think with everything that Dallas did, it worked out for them too. So we're happy to have Kyle. Um, he's already been back in DC a couple times already All working, right. leading the group. So um, it, it worked out well. Is he the type of guy that the phone lines are open regardless? Like, I guess the rumor was you guys wanted two first round picks. Like, do, are you constantly keeping, I don't want to say price tags, but ideas <laughs> no. in your mind about this is what we would love to get for you? Yeah, this no, I, I think we got some guys that people have value. Um, and when they spend oh, wow. their time and they call you on the phone, they're always thinking of things. It goes both ways. So we're, we're always aware of what's going on, but we're not selling our players or out there price tagging people. No, that's not it. 
Just, oh. A lot of people online are saying that the Wizards are the favorite to land Josh Giddy. Is that someone you would you think fits in, in what you guys are doing over yeah, there? You're not gonna catch me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Next try. And are the bar good? I'm not gonna comment on another two player, but uh, no. Well, hypothetically, <laughs> I <like> hypothetically <laughs> speaking, <laughs> there we go, there we go. I, I'll change. I got you. <laughs> My prime, Chandler's prime. Oh, oh God. you oh, take wow. over as GM. Which one of us you're trading first? <gasps> Who can get the most value? What age? My prime was 28. <laughs> My prime is right now. Oh, <laughs> God, this is the worst. I'm, I'm taking the humility the guy can deal with in the locker room every day. I'm going with Lou. Yeah. Oh, you're staring. Taylor's on his way out. I need the humility in the room. I can respect that. Can you? I can respect can you respect that. That. Yeah, I can. No hard feelings here. Ship him to Memphis. Ship him to yeah. Memphis. He loves Memphis. He loves Memphis, Memphis by the way. Do you get an off season? Like, do, Ooh. what do you do? Do you go on a vacation? Someone asked me that question the other day, and I was like, my neighbor, actually. Uh, <laughs> Fair Probably enough. not till August. Probably trying not to look out for you, whoever yeah. that neighbor is. He was. I think he just wants to spend some quality time. So hopefully we can grab a beer and hang out. But uh, yeah. as you guys know, June is super busy. We're mm -hmm. out here watching some more workouts while I'm out here in LA. Got to get ready for draft season in June, and then July is around the corner with free agency and summer league, and potentially hopefully some Olympic action as well. So we'll see how that goes for our guys. Dude, this has been awesome. We are so appreciative <laughs> that you came into the studio. I love we know you it's guys. bright Absolutely. and early. It is bright and early. Will Dawkins, y'all. Much appreciated. Will Dawkins. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. We'll be back.